Today we're going to be looking at Starry Sky Stacker, which is an application for those of you on Mac. Now normally I do all these tutorials for Windows users, but thankfully my good friend let me borrow her Mac computer for the week. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering my process of doing the initial editing. And also we're going to see just how well Starry St uh, Sky Stacker works because I am familiar with Deep Sky Stacker and Sequitor. So I thought it'd be good to show those of you on Mac what you can get here in terms of stacking applications. And the first thing you're going to want to do is get Adobe Bridge and Camera Raw if you don't already. And that's going to allow us to do our initial edits. Now, once you have all of your raw files, the first thing you need to do is find the start of your actual imaging sequence. So if I go through here, one thing I notice is that this second photo is 45 seconds. And that tells me that this was still a test photo. And then by 8487 here, from then on, that was the start of my official imaging sequence. And that's the first thing you're going to want to do is find the official start of your sequence and delete anything else that doesn't fit. So in this case, I can delete these two photos. And also when you're going through here, you want to check through your photos and see if there's any images where the clouds come in. And that's what we're seeing down here, especially in the last photo, the clouds really started to roll in and began obscuring the Andromeda galaxy. So I'd recommend just deleting these types of photos right out of the gate. Uh, the great thing with Starry Sky Stacker though, is that we'll find those very easily and automatically remove them from your imaging sequence. So it's not really a big deal if you have some photos like that in there, but I always recommend saving some disk space and some time and just getting them out of the equation at the start. So once you have all of your good photos left, now we're gonna select all of those and then right click and open in camera raw. And I know some of you might think, well, don't we need the raw files to take into Starry Sky Stacker? Well, the way this program works is that it does require TIFFs. So before we can even uh, start using Starry Sky Stacker, we need to do our basic processing. Uh, so with that in mind, the first thing I want to do is increase the exposure here because it's kind of hard to see portions of the Andromeda galaxy. So I'm just going to bring it up until I can see the fainter bands there. Then I'm going to bring down the highlights. That way I'm not blowing out the core. And then finally I bring up the shadows a little bit. Now since I shot this particular image with a Tamron 150-600, I am also going to enable the profile corrections to fix for the vignette. Alternatively, if you're using a telescope, you can take your flat images and you can plug those into Starry Sky Stacker. Or what you can do is come in here in Camera Raw and manually fix the vignette. Not very hard to do. Just come to the Manual tab. I usually increase the amount somewhere around 30 and then the midpoint I tend to bring down all the way to zero and that's usually good enough for fixing the vignette very quickly and easily without having to worry about the flat fields. Uh, however you want to do it though I definitely recommend fixing that vignette because it's just going to cause problems later on. In this case though I have the automatic option so I'm going to go with that and I'm also going to remove chromatic aberration. Now one small side note if you get towards the end of your workflow in Photoshop and you notice you have kind of like a grid-like pattern throughout the photo, it's possible that the distortion correction is causing it. This is something I've found in some of my images. So with that in mind, if you do have this problem, and you'll know it when you see it, it's just kind of a weird grid-like pattern all over the photo, it's possibly tied to the distortion control here. So you can either just turn this down to zero or you can turn off the automatic profile corrections completely. Um, just like how I showed you a minute ago, just by turning it off and then doing it manually to fix the vignette. Uh, but I would just leave everything default for now. And if you run into that problem, you'll probably know what the cause is. Uh, and then from there, the last thing we need to worry about in camera raw is just the white balance. You don't want to leave this on as shot because then every single photo might have a different white balance. I would recommend putting it just manually to whatever looks good to your eye. I usually like to have this a little bit more blue. Uh, or just kind of neutral gray. So I'm going to adjust the colors as needed. Don't fret too much with the white balance here though, because that's something we can really fix a lot more uh, precisely in Photoshop. But in this case, I think the image looks pretty good. It's pretty flat overall. There's not a lot of contrast, which is what we want to get these into Starry Sky Stacker. We've preserved the detail in the highlights and also brought up the shadows. So all we have to do now is right click on our image, select all, right click again, sync settings, and everything should be checked by default. So we'll just hit okay. And now all of our images have the exact same settings applied. 
Then finally, we'll hit Save Images on the lower left. And I recommend uh, using sRGB here. And the author of the program says to use 16 bits per channel. That's usually the recommended option for astrophotography. However, that will increase the file size and also the processing time of everything. So you can do that if you want. Personally, I just leave everything at 8, and I don't really mind. And I haven't really noticed too much quality loss at all. Um, and also, you need to make sure you're saving these as TIFFs. You don't want to do DNG or anything like that. Uh, it will need TIFFs to bring into the next phase of the workflow. Finally, you want to make a subfolder for your TIFF files. And once you have all that set, we'll just hit Save. Camera is going to go through, save all of our images. And then at that point, we'll, ready, uh, we'll be ready to take the TIFFs into Starry Sky Stacker. Okay, now that my images have finished saving, I can click Done, and we're ready to go into Starry Sky Stacker. And one of the great things about this application is that everything is pretty much automatic. You don't have to do much work at all, unlike uh, Deep Sky Stacker, for example. So I'm going to start up the free trial version, and then it's automatically even going to open up the uh, file selection window, which is nice. So you want to navigate to where you saved your TIFF files. In this case, um, I've got all of my images here. And you'll just select all of them, and then also make sure to select the image classification display uh, checkbox here. And then once we hit open, it's going to go through and read all of our files. And then after it does that, you can also determine what your light frames are, your dark frames, and your flat frames, if you have them. I personally never actually use the others. I just use the normal uh, white frames that you're seeing, uh, light frames rather, which you're seeing here. So I'm going to click open. It's going to go through and read all of our images, and then we'll be ready to continue on. So once Starry Sky Stacker has finished loading in all of your files, this is where you can tell it, okay, you know, this one is a dark frame, this one is a flat frame, or, you know, I don't even want to use this photo. So it's kind of nice it has all of this built in. You can also load in different images. And if you get an error at this point that says your photos aren't all the same, exposure time and all that, it's possible that, again, you picked an image at the start of your workflow that wasn't part of your full interval and it's okay if that's included in your uh, sequence here it'll just get thrown out anyway so you should see this window again you can determine if you have any darks or flats and check those but everything i have is a light frame so all i have to do is hit continue and then it's going to load up all of my photos here in the main uh, workspace so this will take another little while and then once this is finished aligning, we'll be able to pick out the best of the photos. All right, so Starry Sky Stacker has finished aligning my images. And you might get this error message where it says it can't align one or more of your photos. That's okay. That either means one of them maybe had a cloud come through the photo, or again, some of your images weren't actually part of the sequence and the core of your object is in a different spot. So it's not a big deal. I'll just hit OK. And now it's going to estimate the quality of all of the different images. In other words, it's going to rank all of your photos based on how much movement there was in the stars, if part of the image has been obstructed by clouds or anything else, and different things like that. Uh, maybe the focus got thrown off a little bit. So it's going to rank them all. And from there, you'll actually be able to go through from the best photo, according to the application, and the worst photo. So this is a great way that I haven't seen any other st stacking application do that actually shows you how well every photo came out. And to be honest, you, know, you can just go through all of your photos one by one at the very start of the workflow before you even go into camera raw and just delete any photos that have motion blur in them. Maybe the tracker just wasn't working properly in that frame or something happened to the lens, it moved a little bit. Whatever the reason, uh, you can always delete those photos at the start of the workflow, but the great thing with Starry Sky Stacker is that you can actually view them all in the application and remove them before you do your final processing. So that's one feature I really like uh, that I haven't seen in Sequitur or Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, but anyway, this is going to take another little while. So once this finishes, we'll be able to actually look at the quality of all of our photos and then do our final composite. So it looks like our processing is just about done here. And that's really the only downside that I've noticed so far with Starry Sky Stacker. And I don't want to go on too long here because it's more than likely the specs of the Mac. Uh, we can look real quick. This is a bit of an older Mac, and it's got 8 gigs of RAM, uh, Core i5, and also an integrated graphics processor. So 
Point being, I'm used to having a much beefier computer to do all my processing, and I have found that this application does take a lot longer than what I'm used to, but like I said, it's more than likely the computer uh, that's the problem rather than the application, but just something to be aware of that this might take a while to actually do all of your processing, and you can even just see up here at the time, if you're going through the video, how much time it jumped between each segment. Um, but anyway, now that it is finished processing, we got a pretty simple user interface here. All we really have to do is click compose, or rather composite, and it's going to go to work. But we don't want to do that quite yet. Up at the top, we have a slider. So the way this is going to work is that if you go all the way to the right, it's going to use every single photo that you brought in. But when I do that, see how the image changed? Uh, remember, it's going to find the images based on quality. So what you're looking at is the absolute worst quality image in my sequence has all the way to the right. If I drag this all the way to the left, that's going to be the best quality image. And it's going to go one by one all the way through there. So in other words, uh, you can do this way by moving the slider and seeing the different photos. For me, the easiest way is to just leave this where it was. In this case, it was uh, 43 images. And use the uh, menu option down here. And this is going to allow you to go through and view all of the photos one by one and you can make your own determination of which photos are going to work best and even here we can see it's kind of taking forever to uh, process which again might be the application or more likely the computer uh, but point being it's kind of a pain so if I go through here we can see any images that have been selected for processing will uh, be visible here if an image has not been selected, it'll have an X next to it. And the current image we're viewing has the check mark. So I can go through here one by one, and I recommend zooming in. You can do that either with the Z key or zoom actual pixels. And this will let you see if you have any kind of blurry stars uh, in your photos. And I know a few of these did have some blurry stars, like that one, see how they're more elongated. Uh, I think there was another one here that's particularly bad. So point being, what you can do is you can go through here one by one at this stage, and you can say, you know, this photo, it's just too blurry for what I, what I want to use. And then you can hit exclude here when you have that option. Now, in this case, it's already been excluded, so I don't have that uh, capability. And I'm going to have to go through here. It looks like I can keep moving the slider over. So I guess that's a good uh, warning for you. If you're thinking of doing the same thing, just leave it where it's at by default. Otherwise, you will have to uh, move the slider, and it tends to take forever. Uh, but point being here again you can come through each photo individually if you notice there are star trails or some type of motion in your stars you can just say exclude and it will remove it from your final processing and that's again one feature I haven't seen any other application do and I really like that it has that capability now alternatively uh, when it's going through here it's going to stack them based on quality so this will be the best quality image this should theoretically be the worst quality photo in terms of the stars moving or things like that. Uh, but you can also sort by the name if that's a little bit easier for you. And then you'll know going one by one. And that might actually be something you want to do if you know that towards the end of your sequence you had some blurry stars. Uh, so now that I've changed it to sort by name, I know that somewhere down here I should have, again, those blurred out stars. So I can intentionally say, hey, you know, I don't want to include that photo in there. So I'm going to spare you me trying to click through here um, since I've already done the processing. But once you've gotten all of the bad photos removed, uh, just by clicking exclude once you have it selected from your list, or you can just hit include if you want to add one back in. Pretty easy to do. Again, you don't have to spend all this time if you don't want to. All you have to do once you get to this stage is hit composite. And now it's going to essentially do our stacking. Once it finishes, then we can determine the final output and we're ready to do our full processing at that point in Adobe Photoshop. Now that Starry Sky Stacker has finished processing, the last thing we have to do is determine which algorithm we want to use. And I would just recommend everybody leave it on mean and then hit save. And then from here, you can navigate to wherever you want to save it as. Now, you can alternatively use median, which I've tested both side by side. And mean is just very slightly less grainy than medium, so means definitely my go-to uh, for processing. And now you will see the large watermark here. That is because I am using the free trial for right now. So it is kind of nice you can test out the full application before you buy it. 
Uh, but as we've seen today, it, it really is good software. It does a great job. Uh, but why don't we actually take a closer look at the image now? And I've got Photoshop loaded up. And the first thing I want to do is just zoom in towards the core. And we can see there, this was about, again, 40, around 40 images stacked together. And they were each about 30 seconds long, around F6, F6.3. And overall, it's a very clean, detailed image, what we can see. And I spent a lot of time using Sequitor and Deep Sky Stacker on the PC. And I would say this is right up there with both of them in terms of image quality. If anything, it's maybe even a little bit better. We're getting some really nice detail here. Uh, and the noise reduction from all the stacking looks really great. So I'm really impressed with the overall image quality. And if you look close here at the top, you can see we have a little bit of an issue here. That's just because the images were drifting very slightly down to the right. So we do have some dead space. And that's something you always want to look for regardless of which application you're using. Uh, so with that in mind, the first thing I would do is just crop in a little bit to remove that dead space. And depending on which way things are drifting, you might have to crop in from different sides. And then we'll just hit Enter. And there we go. So again, if you have the full version, you won't have the watermark here. But uh, with all that out of the way, now we can really start our processing. I'm just going to do some very brief edits, give you an idea of what we cover in my full Deep Space course, which has, at this point, probably 11 plus hours of content. And uh, we cover, at this point, 11 objects, including the Horsehead Nebula, uh, the Andromeda Galaxy, of course, the Orion Nebula, California Nebula, Veil Nebula. There's a lot in there. So point being, um, if you're interested in learning how to actually process your photos here in Photoshop, there's a lot of tutorials in my new Deep Space course. So I definitely recommend checking that out if you're interested. And you're going to learn a lot that I can guarantee you. Uh, but you can see, just removing some of that color cast right now, the green. And uh, overall, I'm really impressed with Starry Sky Stacker. Like I said, this is the first time I've had a chance to use it. I've also uh, not really used a Mac very often, but I found that the whole process is pretty nice. And again, even after doing some stretching here, the image still maintains its detail. And even if it's still a little bit grainy, just because of the fact that I didn't capture as much light as I should have, we always have access to Camera Raw here in Photoshop. So I can go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and then from here I can remove any noise that survived after the stacking. And that brings me to another point. I have noticed both uh, Sequitor and Deep Sky Stacker tend to have a lot of color noise. That's mainly tied to the fact that they want you to use raw files, which don't have any of this color noise processing done. Point being, since we're using TIFFs, uh, Starry Sky Stacker does a great job in terms of the color noise, and I haven't noticed any issues there. But all I'm doing right now is increasing the luminance slider here on the Detail tab in Camera Raw, and that's one of the best ways I've found to remove grain in your photos. Another cool thing, since we have access to Camera Raw at this point, we can further lower the highlights if we need to, or increase the contrast, even do a little less clarity here to make the image softer and bring down some of the intensity of those stars. Uh, so you can do a lot here in Camera Raw once you've done your basic stacking. But that's about all we have time for in today's video. So I hope this cleared up how well Starry Sky Stagger works. Like I said, uh, I don't have any issues with it so far. It hasn't crashed on me. The only downside that I found, and again, I, I don't want to blame this necessarily on the application because it's more than likely the computer I'm using, but it did seem to take an awfully long time to do all the processing. Um, like I said, you could probably look at the timestamps between each cut of the video and see just how long it actually took uh, compared to Sequitor, which normally takes at most five minutes. Deep Sky Stacker usually takes twice as long as Sequitor. So I'd say this is the slowest of all three applications. Um, just as a side note, and again, uh, that's because I am using a different computer, so don't put too much stock into that. But overall, I would definitely recommend this. I know if you're on a Mac, you don't really have a lot of options in terms of photo stacking. You could use Photoshop, but that's really resource intensive and more than likely it'll crash your computer and you're not gonna get the best results. So with all that in mind, I'd highly recommend anybody with a Mac who wants to get into deep space astrophotography, check out the Starry Sky Stacker application. You can get the free trial, check it out. Uh, you'll still be able to see just how well it works. And then from there, you can decide if it's worth the $25 for you. 
And that's all I have for you today. So if you want to learn even more about how to process your deep sky images or how to even take them, you can check out my deep space course over on my website. And then finally, I'm really excited to announce that I've published my 2019 workshop schedule. So I'm going to be traveling another six months this year from April until October, going all over the country to some of the best locations, specifically for astrophotography for most of it. So if you want to learn how to actually take these photos out on location at an amazing spot, uh, whether that's in Utah, California, or some of my other locations, definitely head over to my website and you can see my full itinerary and you can schedule your own private workshop. So I'm really excited about that. And it's definitely one of the best ways to learn is actually out on location. Uh, so if you're interested, all that's over at peterzalinka.com. And I'm also hoping to do a starry landscape stacker video here sometime this week. That's going to be if you're taking multiple photos uh, of nightscape. So stay tuned for that, and I'll catch you in that video.